My Fusion System, Fusing a Thousand Chickens at the Start Chapter 81, The Recruitment of Mages Watson's reward ceremony ended very quickly. Then, the three handmaidens were sent to Alan and the other two to sign the master-servant contract. In addition to the manor and the handmaidens, Watson also rewarded Alan and the other two men with 100 rainbow phoenix chicken eggs each. Then, the ceremony had ended. Watson left after he delivered an encouraging speech to the other knights. When Watson's figure disappeared into the castle hall, the Black Moon Knights burst into a discussion. I'm so envious of Captain Allen. The Zangwill Manor he chose is a well-known manor. It has flower beds and grasslands that cost a lot of money to cultivate. The air is fresh, which is helpful for cultivation. Even if it's not for cultivation, the medicinal herbs in the flower bed are also worth a lot of money. One of the guards looked at Allen, his tone could not hide his envy. I prefer Vice Captain List's choice, the Wilbur List Manor. Oh, it should be called the List Manor now. If I can get this manor, I can bring my family with me, and occasionally invite guests too. How grand would that be, another guard said. Look at William's silly smile. I'm sure he didn't pick that cute and cuddly servant girl to do housework. How hateful. William looks like that, but he got a woman before us. I wonder if the servant girl would be able to stand him. The few men gathered together and cursed William in their hearts, they gnashed their teeth in hatred. All right, stop talking about it. We have many people coming to Black Moon Castle these days. We need to double our efforts in training and patrols to ensure there is no trouble. If any of you drag me down and embarrass the Black Moon Knights, then don't blame me for being rude. As he listened to the discussions around him, Alan glanced at the obedient and silent servant girl beside him. He waved his hand and spoke in a dignified manner. Yes, Captain. The guards at the scene responded one after another. After they saw Watson's generous reward, they would take the initiative to work hard. Sometimes, actions were better than words. They were the same, there was no reason other people could get the rewards, and they could not. No one would be willing to accept it. After they left the castle hall, Watson told Capella to arrange work for the other servants. After he left them to familiarize themselves with the castle environment, he walked down the stairs to a room on the second floor. That room was reserved for his second sister, Nindy, and her best friend, Index. Ever since they had killed Folson, the mages who had been with him had stayed behind in Black Moon Castle. It was not that they did not want to return to the mage guild, but that they could not go back. Every Silvertier mage was a precious asset to the mage guild. Unfortunately, there were only more than ten Silvertier mages in the whole of Monty Town, especially for a mage like Folson, who had a chance to advance to Gold Tier, he was a treasure. If Folson had died in a ruins exploration or to a magical beast, then the guild would still be able to accept that. It was a pity that he had died at the hands of those in Black Moon Castle. So, they could not let those mages go in case they would report about what had happened. However, the mages were also afraid to go back. Even if someone else had killed Folson, it was still their fault because they did not stop it. The guild would punish them. Watson heard the discussion in the room before he entered it. Miss Nindy, what should we do next? We can't stay in Black Moon Castle forever. Of course, I'm not saying that this place is not good. In fact, this is the best place I've ever lived. I think some noblemen don't even have a better environment. If it's possible, I would like to stay here forever. One of the male mages had said that. Yes, for the past two days, I have been lucky enough to eat a rainbow phoenix chicken egg. That magical taste still leaves me with an endless aftertaste. Not only that, but the egg has also increased the magic elements in my body. I really want to be a mage here and use my craft as a way to get paid. I don't need much. I'm already satisfied with eating a rainbow phoenix chicken egg daily, but... That was the voice of another male mage, who seemed hesitant. He did not finish his words, but his meaning was clear. Would Black Moon Castle hire them? 
They were only bronze tier mages, and Watson was already at the silver tier. Watson had been kind enough to not punish them since they were Folson's associates. Why would he hire them? So these people want to stay in Black Moon Castle. Well, I was thinking of a way to recruit them. Watson leaned against the door with his ears pressed against it, he listened to the movements inside the room. The corners of his lips curled upward. Folson had selected those mages specifically to cast a joint attack spell. Watson was most proficient in water elemental magic. During the battle with the allied forces of the manor, he had discovered that the biggest problem he had was not a large number of troops but the fact that the enemy had many powerful mages. A mage's role in a battle was irreplaceable. He had created the Black Moon Knights to sweep their enemies, and he would need a mage regiment amongst them. The warriors rode on the magical beasts to charge to the front, while the mages would follow behind them to cast magic. They would protect their companions while knights destroyed the enemy. Watson was excited when he thought about that scene. As he had made up his mind, Watson continued to listen to the movements in the room. He wanted to see if all the mages wanted to join Black Moon Castle. Inside the room. The five mages sat around a large bed. A sky-blue magic staff and a simple small bag were on the bed. They were the heart of the sea magic staff and storage bag that Falson had left behind after his death. Nindy and Index took off their shoes and socks and leaned against the headboard. The three male mages sat on the side of the bed. Their eyes glanced at the pale and slender feet of their two female companions occasionally as they swallowed their saliva discreetly. Of course, they could only watch. The mage guild had a rule they were not allowed to lay hands on their companions. Plus, Nindy's status as Black Moon Castle's second young miss was enough to keep them at bay. Nindy, what they said makes sense. I want to stay in Black Moon Castle too. Intix hugged Nindy's shoulder and shook it gently. I don't want to go back to the Mage Guild. We worked so hard on missions and promotions, but in the end, we can't even get much materials. Unlike here, when you're tired, you can take a bath, and when you're hungry, you can eat good meat and bread, and you have the chance to eat the Rainbow Phoenix chicken eggs too. It's like heaven. After a pause, Index continued to say, Nindy, for the sake of our friendship, please let me stay here. Even though I'm only an iron tier mage, I'll work hard on becoming stronger. I'll try my best to contribute to Black Moon Castle. If it really doesn't work out, then I'll offer Elder Folson's belongings. For the sake of these things, I believe that your brother will accept us. Folson's belongings include two precious silver tier items, and there was half a gold tier magic scroll too. They had wanted to send them back to the Mage Guild, but they did not want to go back there. Those items could be used to please the castle's master. Do you all think so too? Nindy pondered for a moment before she looked up at the male mages across from her. Yes, we do. The three male mages nodded like chicks pecking at rice. Nindy pursed her lips, and after some hesitation, she said, All right, I'll try to ask Watson later to see what his plans are. I also hope that you can stay, but I can't make any promises. If Watson were still the same young boy she had last seen him, then he would do as she said. However, she had not seen him for so many years, she was unsure that he was still the same. Watson had matured, and he had admirable bearing she did not dare to say anything like that in front of him. At that moment, the bedroom door opened. Watson walked into the room as he tidied his clothes. There's no need for an introduction, you should know me by now. I managed to listen to some parts of your conversation. Second sister, there is no need to feel burdened. They can stay. However, I will need them to sign a contract to say that they will never betray me. Then they can become Black Moon Castle's exclusive mages. Also, Folson's relics should be mine. Chapter 82, Learn the Mine Cannonball Watson, you heard that. Nindy was shocked when Watson opened the door and walked into the room. Yes, we're all friends here, so I hope that everyone can stay too. If you become a mage with Black Moon Castle, 
I will give you 10 gold coins a month and 3 rainbow phoenix chicken eggs every day. However, like the Black Moon Knights, you'll have to participate in training. If you perform well, then you will have a chance to get a high quality magic staff and the eligibility to learn higher level magic. Watson narrowed his eyes and smiled like a little fox. They would get a high quality staff? Learn higher level magic? The few mages, including Nindi, breathed heavily. When they were with the Mage Guild, they had to accumulate points through missions for several years to exchange for bronze tier magic scrolls. As for higher level silver level magic, it was something that could only be found by chance. They would not be able to do that for at least 10 years. I have a bronze tier spell and a silver tier spell they are both water elemental spells. If I have Folsom's relics, then I believe that I can double that. I will teach you these spells in time, so think about it. Watson increased the drama flare, he knew he could move them. We are willing to join Black Moon Castle. The mages looked at each other and nodded solemnly. Even if they could not learn high-level spells, they would still be satisfied if they could eat Rainbow Phoenix chicken eggs daily. The eggs could improve their fitness and increase the content of the magical elements in them. If they were to eat the eggs for a period, they were confident that they could break through to Silver Tier. Very good. Since you've decided, then let's sign the contract. Watson clapped his hands and summoned his personal maid, Capella, to help draw up a contract. The contract stipulated the salary and reward system for the mages. It also stated the work that those mages had to do, including daily training, expedition for magical beasts with the Black Moon Knights, defending the castle in times of danger, and others. The people of that world paid great attention to contracts, and once it was signed, they would not go against it. So, to be safe, Watson added a clause at the bottom of the contract that said the final interpretation of the above clauses would belong to the Black Moon Castle. An hour had passed after the contract was signed. Watson brought the mages, including his sister, to the training field outside the castle. Since the Black Moon Knights were on patrol, no one was at the field, it was only them. Watson, why did you bring us here? Nindy asked carefully as she accompanied Watson. She looked at Watson subconsciously and found that her younger brother had a confident smile on his face. His blue eyes contained everything, and she could not help but nod secretly. He was different from the past. He had been a silly child who had run around their house to a young genius what had he experienced? I'm going to demonstrate some magic. It might cause some damage if we were in the castle. So it's better to do it here. Watson explained that with a smile. He patted the small bag on his waist and held a sky blue magic staff in his left hand. Those two items were given to him after the mages had signed the contract. He wanted to test the strength of those two items and intimidate those mages. Benefits could make people hot-headed, but it would not last long. Watson still needed to intimidate them with force and also treat them with kindness and power. He would only call himself a qualified leader then. After he made up his mind, Watson lowered his head, the information of the magic staff appeared in his eyes. Silver Tier Tool Heart of the Ocean Staff Effect, increases the casting speed of water elemental spells by 20%, reduces the power by 50%, and reduces the consumption of spells by 50%. Additional effects, during rainy days or in an environment with sufficient water elements, all effects will receive an extra 50% boost. Watson nodded in satisfaction. Then, he raised his staff and tried to use the only silver tier spell he had mastered the water elemental warrior summon. When he raised the staff in his hand, a dark cloud suddenly appeared in the sky. Lightning flashed and thick water columns fell from the sky and landed and left large holes in the ground. They turned into tall, three-meter-tall blue warriors, and they held a shield and a long spear in their hands, and their steps were firm. Watson felt the swelling pain and discomfort at the back of his head, but he ordered the warriors to stay where they were. The water elemental warriors that he summoned were more solid than the ones he had summoned on the battlefield. The sky-blue armors looked like they were made of steel, and the number of warriors had also increased. 
He had managed to summon 100 warriors in the previous battle, but he had summoned 150 warriors on that day. The duration had also increased to 10 minutes from the previous 5 minutes. This is the power of a Silvertier magic staff. It is no wonder that every powerful mage would have a magical tool it can double their strength. Watson sighed and waved the staff to disperse the water elemental warrior. He began to study another tool that Fulson had left behind the spatial pouch. Silvertier tool the spatial pouch. Effect, there is a 100 square meter vacuum inside the spatial pouch. It can be used for storage. The items placed inside will not rot over time, but the pouch can not store living things. Activation method, add magic elements into the spatial pouch. After he added his water elements into the spatial pouch, Watson quickly opened it, but there were not many items left inside. Most of the scrolls had been consumed by Folson during the previous battle, but he found half a gold tear scroll and a silver tear scroll called the Mine Cannonball. Other than that, there were a few bottles of potions and some food from the waves that they emitted, they should be either bronze tear and iron tear. Then, Watson retrieved the Mine Cannonball scroll. There was a shining silver metal plate made of arcane mithril in his hand. In the previous battle, Folson had left a deep impression on him when he used that move. Even though the source of chaotic elemental magic in his body had managed to absorb the mine cannonballs, some of them still hit the ground and caused some violent explosions. Watson did not deny that it was a powerful spell. As Watson studied the chant and the metal plate carved onto the scroll, the other mages observed him as they discussed in a low voice. Young Master Watson is a silver tier mage, indeed. The water elemental soldiers that he summoned were too powerful. I've seen them once on the battlefield, but this is the first time I've seen them up close. If we can master this spell, then we can form an army all by ourselves. Everyone would yearn for this type of powerful spell. Unfortunately, I'm only a bronze tier mage now, and the power in my body isn't enough. Even if I master it, I won't be able to cast it. Is young Master Watson trying to learn Elder Folson's ultimate skill the Mine Cannonballs? Those Silver Tear spells are not easy. Some people looked envious, some looked regretful, and some were curious about Watson's actions at that moment. Even if one could master the Silver Tear spell, one would still require hundreds or thousands of attempts to cast them. If one made one small mistake in any of the steps, then the spell would fail. It might even cause an explosion. Even a genius like Watson could not have learned it that fast. Chapter 83, Fusion of Gold Tier Magic Nindy, your brother is so powerful. Indix held Nindy's hand tightly as her eyes shone. I wonder if he has someone he likes? But, perhaps no, he's still so young. Indix, what are you doing? Nindy looked vigilant. Well. If your brother doesn't have someone he likes, I can be his girlfriend. The corners of Indix's mouth rose as she joked. I'm only 16 this year, not much older than your brother. When he's older, perhaps in the next two years, he'll have to consider marriage. If I can have such a talented and rich husband, I can become a silver tier mage with only the resources. Then, I won't have to worry about it for the rest of my life. Think about it. Sister Nindy. Uh, Index, don't you think it's disgusting to act like a spoiled child? Nindy was speechless, but she somehow understood Index's thoughts. If she had been wandering for many years and met a genius like Watson, she would be willing to be his girlfriend too, or even a maid, regardless of the man's appearance or age. If she had been in the other person's shoes, she might have the same idea. As Watson's girlfriend, she would not only get to learn advanced level magic, but she would also become Black Moon Castle's mistress. Unfortunately, she was Watson's sister, so she did not have the same chance. While Nindy thought about it, a chanting voice came from nearby. Great water element, listen to my call and become an indestructible cannonball. Silver tear spell mine cannonballs. It was Watson. At that moment, he held the heart of the sea staff in one hand and a silver tear scroll in the other. 
I can't believe young Master Watson is studying the mind cannonball spell. Everyone, retreat, quickly. The mage's expression changed abruptly. They cried out in alarm as they took a step backward. That was the first time Watson had dared to try such a spell. It was fine if the spell had failed, but if there was an explosion, they would not be able to escape at such a close distance. They did not have the same strong physique as Watson's gold-tier warriors. If they were sucked into a silver-tier spell's explosion, they would definitely die. Soon, everyone, including Nindy, retreated about a hundred meters. Then, however, a dramatic scene appeared. After Watson finished chanting the spell, a curtain of sky-blue water immediately wrapped around his body. The heart of the sea staff magnified the effect several times more, it changed the cannonballs into the size of a human head. There were about 150 of them, and they whistled as they spun above his head. Young Master Watson had mastered the mine cannonball spell at first try. A mage stared blankly at the young child, his gaze was dull. This is a silver tear spell. What kind of monster is he? This has already surpassed the realm of a genius. Another male mage followed suit. He did not expect that Watson could master the mine cannonball spell so quickly. He was also envious when he thought about how Watson was already a silver tier mage at ten years old. He was already in his twenties, but he was only a bronze tier water elemental mage. Nevertheless, his talent was considered above average in the entire mage guild. He had always considered himself a genius, but compared to Watson, he was nothing. Watson ignored the reactions of the people around him. Instead, he was immersed in the pleasure of mastering the mine cannonball spell. Each of the mine cannonballs has the same power as a silver tier warrior's strike in full strength. The explosion range is 5 meters, and the longest distance is 500 meters as expected of a silver tier spell. With the fusion system, he could learn almost anything at once that was an additional ability of the system. He controlled the mine cannonballs to hover in the sky for a moment. As he enjoyed the explosive power contained in them, a bold idea came to Watson's mind. He had two silver tier water elemental spells. If he fused the two spells, would he be able to fuse even more powerful gold tier spells if he were lucky? Watson could not control the excitement in his heart. System, begin the fusion. Congratulations, Master. You have successfully fused two silver tier spells. You have obtained a gold tier water elemental spell, the humanoid auto mine giant. As the system's voice echoed, countless pieces of knowledge appeared in Watson's mind. The amount of information hurt his brain so much that it felt like it was about to explode. At the same time, a powerful, attractive force came from the outside world and sucked all the magical elements in his body. His face paled as his body trembled, and he almost fell down. The attractive force still did not weaken. Instead, it turned around and began to absorb the power from the source of chaotic elemental magic in his lower abdomen. It only stopped after it absorbed enough magic power that equaled a gold-tier mage. Watson's source of chaotic elemental magic had absorbed the gold-tier spell that Folson had released twice the Silver Serpent on the Raging Sea. It had also absorbed a large wave of mine cannonballs. So the amount of magic power was equivalent to three gold-tier mages, and he had lost one of them forever. After Watson absorbed Folson's attack on the battlefield, he had asked the system discreetly about why the source of chaotic elemental magic could absorb other magical powers. The system's answer was that the source of chaotic elemental magic was initially a part of the world, all the magic elements in a mage's body originated from the source, so it could absorb it as well. However, each source could only absorb the corresponding and lower magical elements. For example, the light element was made up of four elements earth, fire, water, and wind. So, its source could absorb all its corresponding elements light, earth, fire, water, and wind, and it could not absorb any dark elements. The chaotic element was made up of light and darkness. Therefore, it could absorb any elements from both sides. However, it would not be able to absorb from a higher level if one were to appear. At that moment, 
Watson barely managed to stabilize his body. Then, before he could sigh, he saw the hundred mine cannonballs around his body pulled by the lightning inside him. The cannonballs changed their shape and turned into water elemental giants that were more than ten meters tall. They were quite different from the water elemental warriors that Watson had summoned. They were not only larger, but their hands did not carry a shield nor a long spear. Instead, they held one cannonball in each hand. Gold Tear Spell Humanoid Auto Mine Giant Effect, based on the amount of magic, you can summon an unlimited number of mine giants. Each mine giant has the ability to fire mine cannonballs, and its power is equivalent to a silver tear spell. Additional effect, when each mine giant dissipates or takes fatal damage, it will self-destruct. The damage is equivalent to 100 mine cannonballs exploding at the same time. How is this a mine giant? It's a self-destructive soldier. Watson sighed before he thought of something. Then, he shouted, Oh, no. Second sister, get everyone back to Black Moon Castle. Then get the Black Moon Knights to evacuate all the workers who are working outside and stay far away from here. The mine giants would self-detonate when they dissipated. Watson's strength was depleted, so he could only sustain those mine giants for half an hour. If each mine giant's explosion was equivalent to 100 mines, and there were 100 mine giants, it meant that the blast would be equivalent to 1,000 mines. That power was enough to raise everything in sight to the ground. I got it. Nindy felt a new sense of fear when she saw the 10-meter-tall giants. She could understand Watson's panic, so she brought the mages back to the castle and told everyone to hide in their rooms. She also told the Black Moon Knights to evacuate the people in the castle with them, they went about one kilometer away from the castle. The Black Moon Knights and thousands of workers looked at the castle from afar. Many of them wondered why they had to leave so suddenly. They were still repairing the castle. They thought that if they worked hard, they would be able to fix half of the gate that day. At that very moment. Boom. It was as if thousands of thunder had rumbled at the same time as a huge mushroom cloud appeared in the center of Black Moon Castle. It released water vapor that spewed in all directions. The surrounding walls around Black Moon Castle collapsed, and the entire castle sank about three centimeters into the ground as bronze-tier dark jade stone walls cracked. The circular wind spread in all directions as it blew a layer of the earth off, it also almost blew into the people who were about one kilometer away. There were no clouds in the sky, but it rained within a radius of dozens of kilometers. Chapter 84, Rebuilding Black Moon Castle Watson, next time you cast a spell, can you find a place with no one around? I think the Misty Forest is not a bad choice. Black Moon Castle has only just been established. Are you going to demolish it again? Half an hour later. Watson stood at the castle gate as he endured his father, Edward's complaints. I'm sorry, father. It's my fault. He put his hands on his stomach, his face was red. He could not defend himself. He did not expect the fused gold tear magic would be so powerful. He had felt the same when he saw Folson cast the silver serpent on the raging sea, a gold tear spell. It seemed like Folson only had half a gold tear scroll, so it was not as powerful. Its real force was more terrible than he had imagined. He had planned to use the fused magic to frighten the mages in Black Moon Castle, he would stop before the spell could do any damage. He thought he could use the source of chaotic elemental magic in his body to absorb it. However, the humanoid auto mine giant spell came with a self-destructive element. The source of chaotic elemental magic in his body might not be able to withstand the enormous explosion if he were to absorb it forcefully. It might even be damaged. According to the legend, there were a dozen sources of magic in the world, but there were only six left, excluding the chaotic elements. It meant that the sources were not omnipotent, and high-intensity vibration could destroy them. Watson also had to remember that he could not let the source accept everything and he knew that it would be difficult to absorb platinum tear spells. He also warned himself that he would not use that particular gold tear spell unless it was absolutely necessary. Firstly, 
the magical elements in his body were not enough to cast gold tier spells. Its improvement could only be achieved through accumulation over time. Secondly, the spell's destructive power was too strong. Furthermore, it would not differentiate between friend and foe. If he were to cast it on the battlefield, the spell would kill his allies as well. No wonder there are so few high-level elites, and there are only a handful of platinum-tier professionals. The only diamond-tier elite in the kingdom is the Sword Saint. Perhaps it's because we need to train for a long period before we can command any destructive power and not destroy anyone else. As expected, I'm still far from becoming a true expert. Due to his fusion system, Watson had not been afraid of anyone he was proud and arrogant. At that moment, he re-examined himself and dispelled that thought. Watson, what did you say? Hey, are you in a daze? Why aren't you saying anything? Watson was in deep thoughts when he realized that his father, Edward, had waved his hand in front of him. Father, I said I was wrong. What? What did you say? Watson, I'm not saying that you should admit it when you've made a mistake. Why do you look so relaxed? Do you not take my words seriously? I know that you're competent now. You're a gold-tier warrior and a silver-tier mage at such a young age. Oh. No, you're a gold-tier mage now. But you can't be arrogant and complacent. You're even a little worse than my father when I was young. Edward scratched his ears and spoke loudly as if he could not hear anything. Watson had a strange look on his face. Was the vibration too strong and damaged his father's ears? His father was not an intelligent man, and it seemed like he had become deaf as well. What should he do? It was too pitiful for his mother to have such a husband. Should he try to fuse some medicine and treat his father's ears? Black Moon Castle had accumulated a large number of medicinal ingredients from the other manor's assets. Therefore, it would not be difficult to fuse some medicine to treat his father's ears. Edward, I told you to go out and have a look at what happened. What are you doing? At that moment, Watson's mother, Catherine, appeared. His eldest brother, Vicent, and his seventh sister, Scarlet, also rushed out of the castle. When she was beside Edward, she grabbed his ear and shouted at the top of her voice. I'm talking to you. Didn't you hear me? I did, darling. I'm not deaf. Edward rubbed his ear and complained in dissatisfaction. Watson heaved a sigh of relief. It seemed like his father was not deaf perhaps the tremors had caused temporary tinnitus. Scarlet stood behind them, and she observed Watson discreetly. She stuck her tongue out, and she looked shocked. She had been resting in her room when she heard a loud noise from the outside as the entire castle shook. She had thought that it was an earthquake, but after she asked around, she realized that Watson had cast a gold tear spell. She marveled at Watson's strength when she saw the devastation around her and the large, smoking pit on the ground. As one of the youngest in the family, she was still gloating over her silver tear longbow, and she was still working hard to become an official archer. On the other hand, Watson had already become a gold tear warrior and mage. How could there be such a massive gap between them? Vincent also stared at the ruins around him. He had spent so much effort in rebuilding Black Moon Castle, and it had collapsed again. The extent of the damage was even worse than when he had fought against the manor's allied troops. He sighed, he did not even know what else to say about it. Nindy finally walked out of the castle and went to Watson's side. She had a conflicted expression on her face. Watson, my friends from the Mage Guild said that they would be satisfied if they could stay with Black Moon Castle as mages. They don't need any pay, and they don't even need three rainbow phoenix chicken eggs just one egg per week would do. All the mages were frightened by Watson's display of power. He did not only learn the silver tier water mine cannonballs in an instant, but he also fused them into gold tier magic. They knew they could not afford to offend him. Second sister, tell them I will honor the conditions that I have agreed. As long as they work hard, I won't mistreat them. Watson smiled. Even though he had gone a little too far, the result was good. 
he had managed to intimidate those mages. As for the ruined Black Moon Castle, he had already made plans to expand the castle when he seized those manors. Otherwise, it would not be able to accommodate thousands of people. He would take advantage of the opportunity to build the walls to fit ten more manors, he wanted to make them comparable to Monty Town. They would need to collect more ores from the outside while they build the castle, they would be able to finish it in a month. It was not an excuse for his mistake, he already had that intention in the first place. Meanwhile, in the fairy castle at the border, Nightingale walked into the magnificent castle. The guards bowed their heads and greeted her respectfully when they saw her. Lord Nightingale, Count Sylvan is waiting for you. Nightingale responded to those people one by one as she touched her empty waist casually. A small basket hung there, but it did not have any rainbow phoenix chicken eggs in it. No more eggs. Nightingale smiled bitterly. I only stayed in Black Moon Castle for a few days, why do I feel so uncomfortable when I left? After the battle between Black Moon Castle and the manors, she had bid them farewell as she had decided to return to the fairy castle. Watson had given her 1,000 eggs before she left, but she had eaten them all. Nightingale came to an office door after she passed through the long corridor. Then, she knocked on the solid wood door. Come in. Nightingale pushed the door open when she heard the dignified voice, she entered the room. She did not look at the gorgeous figure who sat behind the desk, his face was toward her. Nightingale knelt on the ground and said, Count Sylvan, I'm back. It seems that the test in Black Moon Castle has ended. So tell me, what do you think? Lord Sylvan, Nightingale hesitated for a moment before she said, I think we should send people to Black Moon Castle to recruit young Master Watson. We also should make up for the losses that they had suffered in this battle. I have guaranteed that there will be no more tests in the future. Nightingale, you rarely speak so highly of a place. Did you? Exaggerate? Yes, Lord Sylvain. I think Black Moon Castle is worth it. Chapter 85, Zeke and Zenoa's Return Sylvan was sitting on a chair as he turned his body around slowly. His amethyst-like pupils observed Nightingale. Before Nightingale returned, a spy had informed him of the battle between Black Moon Castle and the manor owners. He also knew that an elder from the Mage Guild had been killed in the fight, and Watson had seized all of the manors. Black Moon Castle became a behemoth that occupied manors from their surrounding area as a result of that battle. He had also heard about what Nightingale had done in Black Moon Castle. Nightingale, you've been living very comfortably these days. A hundred rainbow phoenix chicken eggs each day to train the Black Moon Castle guards. Sylvan smiled. Nightingale, who was kneeling on the ground, trembled. The fairy castle had a comprehensive intelligence network that spanned all over the border. Sylvan had sent Nightingale to Black Moon Castle to gather information but that barely scratched the surface. He had also arranged for his network to focus on details around the castle. A qualified superior would investigate everything at the border, including his subordinates' actions. Sylvan was a cautious person, so he had to ensure that everything was under his control. With a dignified expression, he said, Nightingale, don't forget you are. Count Sylvan, I will never forget that. You were the one who saved me from the small village ten years ago. My life belongs to you, and I will never think otherwise. Nightingale answered respectfully as a flash of fire flashed across her eyes. She recalled her first meeting with Lord Sylvan. It was during a winter ten years ago. Several magical beasts had escaped the misty forest, and one of them, a powerful silvertear beast, had run into her village and damaged the village. After that, a group of raiders had robbed them. It was winter, and those magical beasts had attacked several villages nearby. If they wanted to survive the harsh weather, those villagers could only choose to invade other villages nearby. She would never forget that day. She had seen how the bad men had killed her parents while she hid in the water tank. She saw how the strong men in the village fell one by one, and the women and children were abused cruelly until Sylvan descended and rescued her from that nightmare. 
she had worked hard on her cultivation for so many years to become a shadow guard. When she was the commander, the first thing she did was kill more than half of the evil men who ransacked her village, and she had been hunting the remaining ones since then. She also hated the Silvertear magical beast that had caused so much trouble to her town. The beast was called Silver Moon Wolf, and she had wanted to get rid of it. However, she had not seen the magical beast again for ten years. Hatred was the source of her strength, and Sylvan was the person who had given her that weapon. Count Sylvan, I recommend that you show some goodwill to Black Moon Castle for the sake of Fairy Castle. Watson is only ten years old, but he is already a gold-tier warrior. Furthermore, he had mastered some kind of magical power called fusion magic. Therefore, I believe that he will be a platinum-tier elite or even a diamond-tier elite when he is twenty or thirty years old. He will be of great help to you then, Nightingale said firmly as she pushed her confusion aside. Diamond tier? Nightingale, do you think that highly of Watson? I'm only telling the truth. She might have been telling the truth, but only parts of it. When Watson advanced to the gold tier, a light pillar had appeared on his body, it had connected heaven and earth to form a magical symbol. She had not wanted to hide it but she was not sure what had happened to Watson. She was afraid that it would cloud Sylvan's judgment had she said too much. Perhaps it was a mutation caused by the fusion magic, but she would not know until she investigated it. I will take that into consideration. You may leave, for now, Nightingale. Winter is approaching, and many magical beasts have escaped from the misty forest. As the commander of the Shadow Guards, you must take precautions. Sylvan waved his hand. Nightingale looked as if she wanted to say something else, but she decided not to say anything after a moment of hesitation. Instead, she stood up respectfully and took her leave. Yes, Count Sylvan. I shall take my leave now. After Nightingale left the office, Sylvan turned his chair and looked at the gloomy sky outside the window quietly. It will snow soon. If this had happened a few years before this, I would be interested in taking Black Moon Castle to strengthen my place at the border. However, someone has repaired the source of the chaotic elemental magic, and I'll need to find them urgently. I'll need them to improve my strength. Black Moon Castle's young master will only reach Diamond Tier in 10 or 20 years. Well, I can't wait that long. Sylvan closed his eyes as he whispered softly, I only have one goal in mind, and that is to overthrow the person sitting on the throne. Time flew by, and two months passed in the blink of an eye. It was nearly the end of the eleventh month, almost to the twelfth month. A caravan had set out from Monte Town toward the border. The caravan had more than twenty carriages filled with medicinal herbs, ores, armor, weapons, and essential daily necessities such as salt and condiments. Two young merchants sat at the front of the caravan, and they looked similar because they were twins. Lord Zeke, Lord Zenoa, we have arrived at the border. At that moment, a strong man with a full mane walked up to the twins and bowed his head respectfully. The man had a different appearance than ordinary people. The man was a demi-human, a hyena ma who was famous for his fighting strength. The demi-humans were a significant race in the world and they included orcs, half-bug hybrids, vampires, elves, and many others. All creatures with a human body and had extraordinary intelligence were classified as demi-humans. Even though Holy Dragon Kingdom's main population was humans, they still had many demi-humans who lived amongst them. The demi-humans had been powerful more than forty years ago, and they had instigated the demi-human war in the kingdom. However, they were annihilated by the army of the kingdom. Some of the remaining demi-humans became slaves, while others were demoted to commoners. They would never be noblemen again for the rest of their lives. The demi-humans in the Holy Dragon Kingdom eventually worked as coolies or mercenaries. Since they were born with a stronger physique than humans, they would become iron-tier warriors when they reached adulthood. Talented demi-humans would even get a chance to become bronze-tier warriors. Their fees were also cheap so merchants liked to hire them. The hyena man, who had spoken to the twins, was such demi-human. 
He was only 30 years old, but he was already a peak bronze tier warrior. He was only one step away from the silver tier. He had an assortment of weapons on his body, which included a long saber and a short sword. One's heart would turn cold when one looked at him. Lucas, tell everyone to rest for a while. Let's try to arrive at Mist Forest today, the older twin, Zeke, said. Yes, Lord Zeke. Lucas nodded respectfully. He turned his head and licked his furry lips. Then, he shouted, Everyone, listen up. We'll take a rest here. There were more than twenty guards in the caravan. The weakest among them was an iron tier warrior, and more than half of them were demi humans. After they heard Lucas' order, everyone took their weapons, sat down, or leaned against the carriage. They drank water and ate the bread they carried with them. They also scanned their surroundings vigilantly, which showed admirable professionalism. We've finally returned to the border. I wonder if Watson has missed us after so long, Zeke said, he was a little emotional. Zenoa, who sat beside him, smiled. I don't know what's in his mind, but I am astonished. I heard that he defeated the manor owner's allied troops two months ago, and he even killed an elder from the mage guild. This matter has spread throughout Monty Town. And thanks to him, we can no longer stay there. Chapter 86 The Bloodied Hand Bandit Gang It had been two months since Watson defeated the manor's allied troops. Two months was neither too long nor too short. Many people had seen Folsom when he left for the border with a few water elemental mages. It was normal for mages to collect necessary supplies while they were on a mission, no one would care if they did not head back for ten days or half a month, but two months was too long. Besides, Folsom did not leave by himself, he had taken a few people with him, but none of the mages had returned. The mage guild had initially sent some men to scout for news, but they were shocked when they heard the reports. They did not expect to learn that Black Moon Castle had killed Folsom while he was on a mission. It also looked like the other five mages were detained too. The mage guild could not bear with losing six mages at once, it even shocked their president. If it were not too close to winter, and the weather was too cold and inconvenient, the mage guild's president would have brought men to the border to get an explanation from Black Moon Castle. Zeke and Zenoa had been able to get that information because they had established their own caravan in Monty Town, called the Black Moon Caravan, a name derived from Black Moon Castle. They had been part of the Good Luck Caravan and also Wind Journey Caravan. However, they had left those two caravans about a month ago. They had nothing more to learn from the caravan's leaders, and the twins thought they should not rely on other people anymore. Instead, they wanted to use their own fleets to help Black Moon Castle obtain more resources. They had managed to rely on their wits to recruit more than 50 subordinates in a month, and they had managed to become quite famous in Monty Town. They even formed an alliance with the Good Luck Caravan and the Wind Journey Caravan. They would become the most prominent merchant group in Monty Town in a few years if they continued to progress with Black Moon Castle's support. Unfortunately, the Mage Guild had targeted them because of their ties with Black Moon Castle. As a result, the twins had to take half of their subordinates and leave the town. The rest of their group would organize their supplies and prepare for their future departure. At that moment, the twins and their group had decided to take a rest. Then, suddenly, they heard horses from a distance. Bang! Bang! The earth shook as the horses' hooves struck the ground. Something terrible has happened, Lord Zeke. Bandits. Those men seem to belong to a famous bandit gang at the border the Bloodied Hand Bandit Gang. A guard had run to Zeke with cold sweat all over his head. The Bloodied Hand Bandit Gang? Zeke's expression changed when he heard that. At the border, a large number of magical beasts would leave the misty forest in search of food during the winter. Many people would take advantage of the chaos to kill and plunder. Those people were called bandits, and the Bloodied Hand Bandit Gang was quite well known. They had more than 100 people, which included warriors, archers, mages, and priests. The division of labor was clear, and they had no less than 10 men at the bronze tier. 
Since it was winter, the fairy castle had to work hard to deal with magical beasts, so they could not deal with the bandits. That was why those bandits would appear at that time. Most merchants would not trade unless it was absolutely necessary, Zeke did not expect his luck would be so back. They had met a bandit gang not long after they had left Monty Town. While he thought about that, the bloodied hand bandit gang was already one kilometer away. They wore blood-red capes with a ferocious iron hand print engraved on them. They were excited, and they were shouting. The leader of the bloodied hand bandit gang was named Sparrow, and he was a silver tier warrior, and he was also part of a mercenary group. He did not want to follow another person's command, so he killed the leader of that mercenary group and turned them into a bandit gang. He had a nickname, Bloody Sunset, because he was vicious and cruel. People said that those who saw him were akin to seeing the last sunset of their lives, they would not live to see the next day. People from the caravan in front, release your goods obediently, and I will spare your lives. Otherwise, be prepared to die. At that moment, the leader of that bandit group rode his horse to the front. He looked vicious and ferocious, and he had two scimitars at his waist. Quick, get them up. Let's go quickly. Zeke scanned his surroundings, and then he realized that they were in a forest. There was only one winding dirt path in the woods, but it was not the main road that led Monty Town to the border. Instead, he had chosen that path on purpose because he wanted to avoid the mage guild. They were more than a day's distance from Monty Town and half a day's distance from Black Moon Castle they were in the middle of nowhere. If they were attacked there, they could not even seek help from others. Lord Zeke, what about our goods? Leave them. Money is precious, but our lives are more important. The guards moved away from their goods when they heard what Zeke said. They only escorted the twins' carriage and sped toward Black Moon Castle. A moment later, the members of the bloodied hand bandit gang arrived in front of the carriages. Boss, these guys are rich. I'm not sorry I kept an eye on them when I was in Monty Town. The things in these carriages are worth at least tens of thousands of gold coins. A lackey in a blood-red square scarf used a knife to open the cowhide that covered the goods in each carriage. He licked his lips excitedly when he saw the things inside. Another man looked at their leader and said, Boss, do we still need to chase them? Why not? Sparrow's gaze was bloodthirsty as he licked his thick lips. No one has ever survived after they saw me. Furthermore, they called themselves the Black Moon Caravan, and I heard that there is a new faction called the Black Moon Castle at the border. They are very rich. If we can catch them, we might be able to extort money from the castle's master and earn even more. Then bandits had a rule, they would only work during the winter, which meant that they would only work three months every year. So every time they worked, they would have enough to survive for the next three years. Boss, you are wise and divine. Sparrow waved his hand, he ignored his subordinate's flattery. Get half of our men to guard these goods. The rest of you, follow me. At that moment, a team of more than 100 people split into groups of 50 men, and one of the groups followed Sparrow and charged forward. An hour later, Zeke, Zenoa, and their guards looked desperate when they realized that the bandits had gotten much closer to them. Some of their men suggested some of them stay behind to intercept the bandits so that the twins could have enough time to escape. The twins had treated them well, they were willing to pay them twice the market rate. They would also give them the defective goods which they could have sold. That was why they were willing to sacrifice their lives for their bosses. It won't work. Look. Lucas, the captain of the group, said in a muffled voice. His eyes had traces of fear and despair. The group looked in the direction he pointed, and they saw a stretch of black wall nearby. It was ten meters tall, and it looked endless. It had looked like a giant dragon under the sunset, one would be fearful when they saw it. Where did this city wall come from? Zeke widened his eyes, the wall was black, and it shone with silver light. It was obviously made of bronze tear ores, and it had looked even more majestic than the one they had in Black Moon Castle. Did Watson build that wall? 
or had another force emerged at the border. Look at those rats. It looks like they can run pretty well. The bandits had caught up with them. They were about 100 meters away, and the leader shouted, Go ahead and run. Why aren't you running? He also felt strange when he saw the wall in front of him. However, he was more excited about catching his prey. The Black Moon Caravan's men were in despair, the wall had blocked their path, and their pursuers were right behind them. They could only raise their weapons in grief and anger, they would have to fight those bandits to their deaths. A huge magical beast with two heads and a pair of wings rose into the sky from the wall behind them at a critical moment. A young man in silver armor sat on the beast, he shouted in confusion, Young Master Zeke, Young Master Zenoa. Am I seeing things? Is that you too? Chapter 87, He Seemed to Be Deaf Alan sat on the two-winged liger and looked down from above. Two months ago, some manor owners joined forces with an elder from the Mage Guild, Folson, to attack Black Moon Castle. However, they had managed to avert the danger with Watson's exceptional strength. After that, the young master had experimented with gold-tier magic that caused the destruction of half the castle. Fortunately, they had been able to rebuild in only two months. The first thing they did was to expand the area. The castle had transformed from a few kilometers in radius to dozens of kilometers. The town also had more than a dozen manors, and each manor was connected by a road in a ring-shaped arrangement, which also included the Black Moon Castle. Watson also told them that they would eventually build offices, hotels, and even entertainment centers he did not want to lose out to Monty Town. Alan had clapped his hands in agreement with Watson's lofty ideals. Black Moon Castle also had a rainbow phoenix chicken, and they could earn about 10,000 gold coins if they were to sell the eggs daily. It was enough to cover the town's expenses. Plus, Watson also had his fusion magic, and he could fuse weapons that were better than those iron tier and silver tier weapons in the market the sum contributed to their income as well. They mentioned that Watson's father had already contacted the leaders of the two merchant groups in Monterey Town. They were only waiting for winter to pass before they started to trade. Furthermore, Watson also had two brothers who were merchants in Monty Town. They would not need to worry about Black Moon Castle's progress, they would not have any problem if they wanted to surpass Monty Town. The Zangwill Manor that Alan had chosen was located at the edge of Black Moon Castle. In addition, he was the captain of the Black Moon Knights, so he would also have to patrol the town. He loved that job because he could show off his equipment to everyone. That day, he was on his usual patrol. He did not expect to see Zeke and Zenoa's caravan. He also saw the bloodied hand bandit gang that pursued the twins. He was nervous, he knew that Watson loved his brothers. Otherwise, he would not have barged into Miles Manor for Zeke and Zenoa. He would probably lose his position if he were to let the twins come to harm under his watch. Alan had that thought in mind when he pushed his liger to fly faster. The beast immediately flew past the city wall and landed in front of the caravan. Young Master Zeke, Young Master Zenoa, it really is you. Alan. The twins were stunned when they saw the guard, and then they were delighted. They were worried that the bandits had cornered them. Then, they remembered that Alan was a silver tier warrior. Even if he could not defeat the bandits, he would be able to help them to escape. Why are you here, Alan? Aren't you the Black Moon Knight's captain back at Black Moon Castle? Did Watson move the castle here? Zeke asked as he looked at the wall curiously. He thought the wall looked more luxurious than the walls that Watson had built for the castle. The pitch black wall must have been constructed with bronze tier stones. We haven't moved, young Master Zeke. But the castle is quite far from here. You must not have heard about this, but young Master Watson had combined the castle with ten other manors. I am currently staying at the Zangwill Manor, but it is now called the Allen Manor. And we've built these walls in the past two months, and we used silver tier. Alan explained to everyone as if he knew everything. Before he could finish his sentence, someone interrupted him. Silver tier materials? Are you serious? 
such a magnificent wall. If it's really made of silver tier materials, how much is it worth? The people who spoke were guards who came with the twins. They stared at the wall in front of them with earnest eyes. There was a hint of greed and shock in their eyes. When did Watson become so extravagant to use silver tier materials to build a wall? Is he not afraid that some people might steal some of the stones? Zeno was puzzled. Silver tier materials were scarce. For example, some ores could increase one's spell casting ability, but it was rare. Alan laughed. There's no need to worry about that, young Master Zenoa. He waved his hand. Only silver tier warriors will be able to break these stones, and there aren't that many of them in the entire border. Master Watson had thought about that as well, and that's why the wall is made of obsidian gold. This material doesn't have any other function except that it is tough. Obsidian gold was called metal, but it was actually an ore. Its hardness was beyond one's imagination. It could even withstand the attack of a gold-tier elite. That kind of ore was usually used to make drill bits for mining machines in the kingdom. As they chatted, the bandit gang had reached them. Boss, that person came down from the sky on a magical beast. He seems to be the caravan group's champion, and he seems strong too. What should we do? A bandit gang member in a red headscarf asked Sparrow cautiously. Sparrow stopped his horse. He looked at the mighty two-winged liger and then at his own horse. His eyes were filled with jealousy. As the bloodied hand bandit gang leader and a silver tier warrior, he could only ride a horse, but the other party had a magical beast. Plus, it was not an ordinary magical beast, and from its aura, it looked like a bronze tier beast, it might even be silver tier. Then, he looked at Aaron's shining silver armor, it was not an ordinary item either. There was also a long sword at his waist. It might be a complete set of silver tier equipment. Sparrow felt as if he was a country bumpkin when compared to the other party. He immediately spoke with dissatisfaction. What are you afraid of? No matter how strong he is, he's only one person. We have fifty people here and we have about ten bronze-tier warriors. Our other men will come soon too. If he's smart, he'll know not to cause trouble. Otherwise Sparrow chuckled. With a sneer, Sparrow took a few steps forward and berated Alan. My brother, this caravan belongs to us. If you know what's good for you, step aside, and we'll let you go. Otherwise, don't blame us for not being polite. Alan continued to speak to Zeke and Zenoa about the obsidian gold and what Watson had been up to for the past two months. It was as if he did not even hear what Sparrow had said. Did he ignore the bandit leader? Sparrow's expression darkened, he felt as if he had been mocked. No one had dared to disrespect him since he became the bloodied hand bandit gang leader. Hey, kid, I'm talking to you. Are you deaf? Boss. This guy seems to be deaf. When Alan did not respond to him, the other bandits gathered their courage and winked at their boss. Zeke's subordinate, Lucas, looked backward with a worried expression. Young masters, the bandits are shouting at us. I think they are angry from shame. Why don't you guys leave first? I'll cover you. Zeke also reacted. He was so shocked by Black Moon Castle's changes that he almost forgot that they were still in danger. He immediately shouted, Alan, take everyone and leave. You want to leave? Dream on. Sparrow sneered when he realized that his opponents had finally noticed him. He took a blood-red glove covered with barbs from his waist. That was his bronze-tier weapon, Blood Bramble. Those hit by the glove would bleed to their death. They had underestimated him, and he wanted them to pay for that. Chapter 88, Defeated in One Move You lot, raise your bows and arrows. Don't let his beast fly into the air, but don't kill it. I want it alive. Sparrow issued an order to his subordinates after he put on his gloves. He did not become the bandit's leader because of his brain, he had a pretty good brain too. The man in front of him was a silver tier elite and he did not seem to mind about Sparrow. Perhaps the man had a trump card. Yes, 
boss. A few bandit archers raised their longbows. They drew their bows and knocked their arrows. The iron arrowhead sparkled under the sunlight. You guys go ahead and test them out. The rest of you can surround them. Don't let them escape in any direction. Sparrow gave a few more orders before his men moved out. More than half of them ran behind Zeke and the others. They raised their swords and sabers as their eyes sparkled with a bloodthirsty light. They looked like wolves that had been hungry for three days. The five bronze-tier warriors with slightly stronger abilities would face Alan head-on. Sparrow smiled, he felt slightly relieved when he saw the scene. They would still have the strength to fight even if they had to face a gold-tier warrior. Can't you see that I'm talking to young masters Zeke and Zenoa? Do you know that it's very impolite to interrupt other people's conversations? Oh, right, I almost forgot that you're a bandit. So you won't know what etiquette is at all. Alan turned his head and glanced at Sparrow with a dissatisfied expression. Alan knew that he had to please those two young masters if he wanted a better life in Black Moon Castle. He had many flattering words for the twins, and it was the bandit's fault that he did not have the time to say them. Is this guy an idiot? The other party is a silver-tier warrior. Why is he still behaving so leisurely? The caravan guards, including Lucas, looked at Alan with disappointment in their eyes. They thought they would have a chance to escape when they saw that someone was there to help them. However, that person had seemed so unreliable. Zeke and Zenoa were also anxious. They thought Alan had talked to them because he wanted to stall for time to wait for reinforcements. However, when they looked around, they realized that there were no reinforcements at all. There was only Alan, a guard from Black Moon Castle, within several kilometers radius. Why would he waste so much time? He should have escaped earlier. Just as everyone was worried, the five bronze-tier bandits had already arrived in front of Alan. The long knives in their hands were covered with a thick combat aura of various colors, and they were saying arrogant words. Well, you seem to be quite strong, but I didn't expect you to be a fool. Just stay here obediently. After I kill you, your equipment will be ours. Do it. The boss said not to leave anyone alive. As they shouted, the five bronze-tier bandits moved toward Alan. They raised the knives in their hands and swung them down with a force that could shatter large rocks. Alan stood there in a daze as he faced their attack. He seemed to have been scared senseless. Some of the caravan guards wanted to step forward to help, but they realized that it was already too late. They could only turn their heads away, they did not dare to look. Bang. Right at that moment, a muffled sound echoed. The five long knives landed on Alan's body. Alan did not move, but the armor on his body was not damaged at all. On the contrary, the five bandits who attacked him had to retreat a few steps. Their faces were filled with disbelief. What had happened? The five of them were bronze-tier warriors. Even a silver-tier powerhouse would have to take two steps backward to show their respect if they were to attack with their full strength. There was only one reason such a situation had occurred. The armor is silver-tier. Furthermore, it's the top quality among silver-tier armors. Sparrow shouted excitedly, Stop! Stop! Leave him to me! He could not afford to be cautious anymore. He could not watch as they destroyed the armor. He felt that he was lucky that day. It was nearly winter, and that was the first time the bloodied hand bandit gang had encountered such wealthy merchants. He had not had a set of silver armor for so many years as a bandit. If he could obtain it, his strength would increase by several times fold, he might even be able to annex a few bandit gangs and expand his influence. As he looked forward to a beautiful future, Sparrow got off his horse and walked toward Alan. A pair of bright red combat aura wings appeared on his back, and it was filled with the smell of blood, he had a fire elemental combat aura. It smelled like blood because he had killed countless men. The gloves on his hands started to burn with blood-colored flames. Wherever he walked, there were thick bloody footprints on the ground that would not scatter. His subordinates stepped aside respectfully and discussed with trembling voices. 
Get out of the way. Boss is going to make a move. Be careful not to touch the flames on his body. Otherwise, you won't be able to quench it until your body turns to ashes. Even water elemental combat aura won't be able to extinguish it. It was not only the bandits who retreated, the caravan guards also did the same. Their faces seemed pale. They shuddered in fear when they saw the murderous aura from the Silver Tear Warrior. Kid, I've given you a chance. If you want to blame someone, then blame yourself for not being quick enough. Sparrow raised his right hand at Alan as he declared that. Alan did not move at all, it was as if he was scared senseless. Humph, is that all you've got? A hint of contempt flashed in Sparrow's eyes. It seemed like the other party's strength was not that great. A silver tier warrior who had killed men was different from a warrior who had never seen blood. He could take care of Alan by himself, he would not need help from his men. Sparrow carried an incomparable aura as he transformed into a ray of light and appeared in front of Alan. His fist burned with flames as he charged toward Alan. Bang! There was a muffled sound, but Alan's face was completely unharmed. Instead, there was a thick layer of water elemental combat aura between his face and Sparrow's burning fist. It looked like the man was quite strong, no wonder he was so arrogant. His pupils contracted. He did not wait for Alan to fight back before he rose into the air and roared, fighting technique bloodied hand chaotic dance. That was his famous ultimate skill. It was ranked top among the bronze tier skills. The air was crushed as blamed claw marks appeared one after another as it formed a continuous web of fire that struck Alan. This guy is in deep trouble. Boss fighting skill compressed the flames into a blade-like sharpness. Even though he's a silver tier warrior, not many people could counter this move. Furthermore, this fool is not even defending himself. Nevertheless, a few of the bandits pitted Alan. However, the result shocked them greatly Alan was still unscathed. There was not even a single wound on his body. He even yawned and scratched his head. Die. Sparrow's eyes reddened his every punch was faster than the last. However, his attack only hit the ground, where it left an ugly scar each time it struck it. That proved that his attack was not without power. It allowed him to strike like a storm, but Alan was like a rock that did not move. How could this be? After half a minute, Sparrow panted heavily and retreated when he realized that his attacks had been ineffective. As he took a step backward, a sword light flashed in front of him. Whoosh! Alan drew the sword from his waist and pierced it through Sparrow's chest. What is this? It's so flashy. Oh, I'm wearing gold tear armor. Well, it would be strange if you could pierce through it. Gold tear armor? he said softly. Sparrow lowered his head to look at his chest, he revealed an expression that was either sorrowful or angry. Why didn't you tell me earlier? If he had known that the armor on the man's body was gold tear, then he would not have stood there and attacked so carelessly. Of course, he would have wanted it even more if he had known that it was gold tear armor. It was greed that drove him to take action, and it was also greed that harmed him. Had their boss lost the fight? The bandits watched the scene quietly with their eyes wide open. No one said a word, it was as if they could not believe that it was real. Their boss chest had been pierced by a sword, and his opponent had only attacked him once. Alan drew his long sword with a swoosh before he kicked the heavily injured sparrow. The sword aura whistled, and the five bronze tier bandits closest to him did not even have time to resist. They were cut into halves at their waist, and fresh blood splattered everywhere. Then, Alan swung his sword again. The sky blue sword aura was like a long dragon as it engulfed the three bandits who had tried to run away. Alan slaughtered them as if he was chopping melons and vegetables. In less than a minute, more than half of bandit gang members were killed or injured. Release the arrows, release the arrows, quickly. A few bandits quickly drew their bows and arrows as they trembled. They aimed at Alan's head and fired. The sharp arrows flew through the air and were shot into pieces by his little finger that was covered in armor. It's really gold tier armor. Sparrow, who laid on the ground, 
widened his eyes and stared at the scene. Finally, he spat out one last sentence before his head tilted and darkness engulfed him. Five minutes later, the whole place was silent. Everyone looked at Alan, who was standing in a pool of blood. They did not know what to say. He had killed more than fifty bandits in only a few minutes. He even killed the bandit leader, Sparrow, in only one move. It seemed like Alan was rich and powerful. The man had a proud look on his face as his combat aura surged. He looked around with his long sword, he looked like a god who had descended from heaven. Alan, we're sorry to have troubled you. Zeke was the first person to react. He resisted the urge to vomit as he walked over the broken limbs on the ground and patted Alan's shoulder. Not at all, not at all. Alan turned around and immediately put on a pleased expression. His strong warrior demeanor had vanished. Young masters Zeke and Zenoa were the ones who encouraged me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to finish the enemy so quickly. Your heroic bearings in the face of our enemies were deeply imprinted in my mind and guided me. Meeting both of you today is like seeing the sun, and my combat aura rose infinitely. Praise the sun, praise the two young masters. When the caravan guards witnessed that scene, the corners of their mouths twitched. They realized that not only was the person's strength beyond their imagination, but his shamelessness was also the same. Chapter 89, Silvertier Equipment is Trash Several carriages drove through Black Moon Town. The caravan guard who was in charge of driving the carriages looked at Alan, who was in the first carriage, as he introduced Black Moon Castle's changes to Zeke and Zenoa. He remained silent. They should have felt very happy after they survived the calamity, but for some reason, they did not feel happy. Alan had wiped out all fifty members from the Bloody Hand Bandit Gang. He took the opportunity to take their weapons and even their clothes. He said, young Master Watson might be able to use it, especially this thorny glove. It's a bronze-tier weapon. That was not the end of it. After he seized the spoils of war, Alan inquired and learned that the goods that Zeke and the others had brought from Monty Town had been taken by the remaining bandits. After he asked for the location of the carriages, Alan left on his liger. He was ready to go deal with the remaining members from the bloodied hand bandit gang. When he returned half an hour later, the bandits had been wiped out. Only a few of the smarter ones, who saw that the situation was not right, had managed to escape. Who would have thought that the famous bloodied hand bandit gang would be wiped out by a Black Moon Castle guard that day? Other than the original goods, all the other items that the bandit gang seized had also been recovered. The items included weapons, armors, and a few thousand gold coins. If Zeke did not stop him, Alan even wanted to ambush the bandit gang's lair to see if he could remove the other members as well. Unfortunately, he could not figure out who they were. No wonder Lord Zeke and Lord Zenoa were so calm when they angered the Mage Guild. They said that they would not be afraid as long as they could return to Black Moon Castle. It turns out they have such powerful elites there. I wonder if it's the same with all the other guards. A guard at the back of the carriage whispered to his commander, Lucas, who sat beside him. Alan had taken their place on their initial carriage, which still smelled of blood. Lucas did not answer the question, but another person beside him said, How is that possible? That Alan is a silver-tier warrior. He was only that powerful because he had gold-tier armor on him. Do you know how much that is worth? If Black Moon Castle equipped all their guards with similar weapons, they would be bankrupt. All right, focus on your driving. Even though we have entered Black Moon Town, who knows if there are other dangers. Don't let your guard down. Lucas waved his hand. Yes, Captain Lucas. After he reprimanded his team members, Lucas took a look at the carriage that headed toward them. He was envious and excited. He thought that Zeke and Zenoa had treated the guards very well, that was why he had followed the twins wholeheartedly. However, it seemed like young Master Watson treated his subordinates even better. He had never even heard of gold-tier equipment before that. Was generosity contagious? Did Lord Zeke's family have a generous personality? 
suddenly, Lucas wanted to join Black Moon Castle. He did not want much, perhaps a piece of silver tier equipment would do. There are more than ten pieces of bronze tier equipment, including the thorny gloves. In addition, there are one hundred iron tier long swords and two hundred sets of iron tier armor. These are the items that I found on the bandits' bodies. I wonder if you are satisfied with that, young master Zenoa, young master Zeke? Those equipment were not worth much. They were not as valuable as the contribution he had made when he saved the two young masters. He believed young master Watson would definitely reward him handsomely. Zeke and Zenoa looked at each other and said, let's not talk about this for now. But, Alan, how did you become so strong? They remembered Alan was only a silver tier warrior two months before that, and he had only bronze tier equipment. That was his reward as the captain of the guards. The other guards did not have the same privilege. So how did he get gold tier equipment in such a short time? Had Black Moon Castle struck gold? They did not only build a silver tier wall that spanned dozens of kilometers, but they also changed their guards' equipment. Did they get their wealth from the defeated manors, or did Alan have some fortuitous encounter? As they enjoyed the scenery along the way, Zeke and Zenoa could see the manors surrounded by trees as maids went in and out of the buildings. They also saw guards on two winged ligers as they patrolled the spacious road, and then there were people dressed in labor attires. Those people were always in groups of two or three. Zeke could guarantee that the road in front of him was definitely the best he had ever seen in a town. It was as smooth as jade and had a milky white luster. Even if the horse carriage moved faster, not a single stone would fly. There was not even a speck of dust on the road. It seemed like the road was not made of ordinary stones. There were fields surrounded by fences on both sides of the road, and there was crystal-colored wheat in those fields. It swayed with the wind, and one could smell the fragrance from afar. If it were not inconvenient in the carriage, Zeke would have wanted to go down and have a taste. Zeke wondered if he had returned to the wrong place. Perhaps he was at the capital of a certain country and not Black Moon Castle? Young masters, I can't explain it in detail. You will know when we get to the castle. As for my equipment, please, allow me to keep you in suspense. You should go to Black Moon Castle to see it for yourself. I believe you will be amazed when you see it. Alan revealed a mysterious smile. We are already very surprised now, Zeke and Zenoa said in unison. They were very excited to see the new Black Moon Castle. About half an hour later, the carriage traveled along the ring-shaped road and arrived at the highest point in the center. There was a steeple-roofed mansion in front of them, and it was surrounded by towering walls. There was a huge training field at the front gate, where more than ten guards in armor and had long swords in their hands were training. Different types of combat aura collided as it made ear-piercing sounds and illuminated the training field. Judging from the color of the armor on these people, they should be silver tier. It seems that gold tier equipment is not common in the castle. No matter how powerful Watson is right now, it is still too excessive to give each guard a set of gold tier equipment. When they arrived at the castle, Zeke got off the carriage with Lucas and a few other guards. As he had stayed in the caravan for a while, his eyesight had sharpened, and it allowed him to determine the quality of the weapons easily. He looked at the armor on the Black Moon Knights and confirmed that they were only silver tier. When Lucas and the others heard his words, they also nodded as if they agreed with him it was impossible for all the guards to have gold tier equipment. The great nobleman in the kingdom might be able to offer that, but they were at a remote place at the border, they would not have such luxury. It seemed that Alan was an exception, that was how the caravan guards comforted themselves. Even though it was equally surprising for all of them to be equipped with silver tier equipment, they would still be able to accept that. Alan smiled as if he could see through their thoughts. However, he did not say anything, he signaled for them to enter the castle. As they approached the training field, the voice of a black moon knight reached their ears. Move faster. Young Master Watson said that the last person in this month's training will be punished, they can't eat the rainbow phoenix chicken eggs. Use your strength. Even though we are all silver tier warriors, 
I am wearing silver tear armor. Don't be afraid to hurt me. It seemed like the guards were only using the silver tear armor for training. Lucas nodded slightly. He could train in that equipment and not have to worry about wear and tear. That made him want to join Black Moon Castle again. Then, he heard a kacha sound before another Black Moon Knight shouted, Damn it, my sword broke. I've only used it against the silver tear armor for half a day before it broke. It seems like the quality of this sword is quite bad. As expected, silver tear equipment is trash. Let me change to another sword before we start again. Broken, bad quality, trash, change to another sword those were the words that Lucas heard, and it made him dizzy and stunned. Chapter 90, The Fusion of Gold Tear Gloves It was not only Lucas, but the rest of the men in the caravan, Zeke and Zenoa were also stunned. If silver tier equipment was trash, what about those who did not even have any bronze tier equipment? Was their equipment worse than trash? Plus, why did those people say? They were all silver warriors. How was that possible? There were not that many silver tier elites at the entire border, right? Did those guys brag because they saw us coming? Lucas could not help but mutter in his heart. He had heard that some noblemen would deliberately show off their best side when they had guests. Some of the poor noblemen would even borrow money to hold a banquet to regain their dignity. Lucas thought that it might be the same situation with Black Moon Castle. Then, he noticed that the guard who had said that silver tier weapons were trash had left the training field. A moment later, he returned with a box of weapons. The box was filled with long swords, there were at least dozens of them. They looked shiny and eye-catching. With Lucas' years of experience as a merchant's guard, he could tell at a glance that the long swords were all silver tier weapons. Then, he saw the guard stabbed another person with the silver tier long sword. However, his opponent managed to block that attack with his combat aura wings. Combat aura wings the symbol of a silver tier warrior. There are also the silver tier long swords. Had they been telling the truth? Lucas was shocked. At that moment, he saw that the castle gate opened. A few people dressed as mages rode out on the two winged ligers and flew into the sky. There were both male and female mages, and they looked excited as they were in a discussion. Nindy, Brother Watson told me that I'm particularly talented in learning water elemental magic. As long as I keep eating a rainbow phoenix chicken egg every day, then I'll be able to learn gold tier magic in a few years to advance as a gold tier mage. He also told me that he would recruit new mages to form the Sky Magic Knights soon. When the time comes, I'll be the vice leader. The one who spoke was a girl with green hair. Her face had a youthful smile, but her riding skills were not very good. The two winged liger flew unsteadily under her bottom. Index, don't be happy just yet. The new mages will have to wait until after the winter. Before that, you'd better practice your riding skills. Otherwise, a person who can't fly freely will not be able to become the vice leader, a man with chestnut hair chimed in, he looked like the leader of the team. What can we do? She's afraid of heights. The mages rode their mounts and flew high into the sky. Soon, the sky exploded with a brilliant magical light show. It was even more glorious than the biggest fireworks in the kingdom. One, two, five. A total of five mages. I can't believe that aside from the fully armed silver tier warriors, there are also silver tier mages in Black Moon Castle. One of the caravan guards raised his head to look at the sky as he said that. Everyone knew that mages were the profession that needed the most wealth. One mage's cost could support dozens of warriors of the same tier. Since they could afford to train so many silver tier mages, it was also no wonder why Black Moon Castle would also have so many silver tier warriors and equipment. Just when everyone thought that they had reached the end of their shock, the cry of a monster suddenly echoed from the sky above Black Moon Castle. A golden lion with twelve enormous wings had flown into the air. A young child who looked like he was about ten years old sat on the beast's back. He wore a black shirt and held a sky-blue magic staff in his hand. He swung the magic staff downward gently. Suddenly, 
the magical elements in the sky became violent. A dark cloud had gathered in the clear sky as thick water columns fell from the clouds and assembled on the ground to form a tall water elemental giant. Its body was ten meters tall, and its two hands were in the shape of two cannon barrels. The thick front section could fit an entire person. This. What is this? One of the caravan guards sat on the ground as his legs trembled. He did not dare to move at all, a water elemental giant was next to him, and its tall body was like a mountain. He was afraid that he would be trampled if the giant were to move its feet. Is it a gold tear spell? Lucas shook his head, he felt a little dizzy. He could not think because of the successive surprises. Alan stood behind him, and he had been watching coldly from the beginning. Then, he finally revealed a smile. What a bunch of country bumpkins. How could they possibly know Black Moon Castle's greatness? They did not show their new guests everything yet. Alan waved his hand toward the sky. Young Master Watson, we are here. Ten minutes later. Watson wiped the sweat on his forehead as he deactivated the gold tear spell, humanoid auto mine giant and put the heart of the sea staff back into his bag on his waist. He had been practicing that spell every day for two months, and he could finally control the spell like when he fused it. He had learned it daily, and his magical capacity had increased, he had officially reached the gold tier. Watson patted the golden flash's head as he got down from its back. The magical beast shrank its body size and contracted its wings immediately. Then, it became an ordinary kitten and climbed onto Watson's shoulder. Third brother, fourth brother, why didn't you tell me that you are coming back today? I was thinking of sending someone to pick you up if you aren't back in two days. We had wanted to give you a surprise, Watson, Zeke and Zenoa said in unison. However, it seemed like Watson had given them a surprise instead. Young Master Watson, they had encountered a bandit group called the Bloodied Hand Bandit Gang on their way back. But, don't worry, I have exterminated all those bandits. I've also seized more than 300 sets of equipment from them, plus a few thousand gold coins. Please take a look, young master. Alan waved his hand. Some of the caravan guards reacted, they pushed a carriage forward. The coach was full of equipment and gold coins it looked like a small treasure room. Some of the Black Moon Knights on the field immediately looked at the crowd before they glanced away again. They did not think it was anything special. Young Master Watson, it's all my fault for being incompetent and scaring the two young masters. If I were a little stronger, I would have been able to eliminate the enemy faster. As the captain of the guards, why am I so weak? I'm so ashamed. As Alan spoke, he looked at Watson and wiped the tears from his eyes. Watson thought it was funny, he knew that Alan wanted a reward. Even though the man did not say anything about how his brothers were robbed, he could guess that it was a dangerous situation. So there was no harm in rewarding him. Alan, since you brought this carriage back, I'll give it to you as a reward. Watson stood in front of the carriage and glanced into it. Hundreds of iron tier weapons and more than ten pieces of bronze equals tier equipment were in front of him. Then he saw the pair of gloves. Bronze tier blood red thorny gloves. Effect, can break the defense of bronze tier opponents. Additional effect, can inflict severe injuries to the enemy. Wounds from this weapon will not heal. This is the only piece of equipment in this carriage that looks pretty good. Watson muttered as he looked at his brother's guards. Then, he had an idea in his mind. Fuse, activate. He extended his hand toward the carriage. With a light shout, the equipment in the carriage immediately transformed into a stream of light and collided to cover the blood-red thorny gloves. After a moment, the entire carriage of equipment disappeared, the only thing left behind were gold coins and a glittering one-handed glove. The glove was engraved with blood-red patterns, and it had a faint glow as if it was breathing. There were thorny-like patterns on the fingers, and the tips were as sharp as swords. The information about the glove appeared in Watson's eyesight. Gold tier endless sea of blood black thorny gloves. Effect, can break the defense of gold tier opponents. 
Additional effects, can cause serious injury, break armor, ignores 50% of the enemy's defense, transfiguration, life steal, absorbs the enemy's blood, the more blood you drain, the more powerful it is. Additional skills, endless sea of blood, releases all the blood it absorbs, causing a large-scale magic attack, up to gold tier.